We could say that pencils are the most popular writing instrument ever invented. They are used for drawing, painting, and marking all over the world. Six billion pencils are manufactured each year. But how is the lead put inside the pencil? You will get surprised after knowing how complex it really is. So pay attention or you will get lost. In this video, we will discover how Faber-Castell makes pencils. The leads of pencils are made from graphite, which is a type of mineral carbon formed from deposits of prehistoric algae that have been buried for over 400 million years. Graphite is a mineral that began to be mined around 1564 when the first mine of this material was discovered in northern England. Graphite is a form of carbon, one of the softest minerals. When pressed onto paper, it releases very fine particles that leave black marks. This material, from which pencils are made, is found deep inside the earth and consists of crystallized carbon-like diamond, but it is much softer. The first pencil makers used graphite straight from the mine. Pencils were created in 1795 by the Frenchman Nicolas Jacques Cot. His invention was based on the combination of graphite and clay encapsulated in wood. Both minerals, along with a little water, are mixed and spread into thin slots in the wood. Nicholas Kant had the ingenious idea of combining graphite powder with clay and baking it while pressing the same mass between two halves of a wooden cylinder, and thus the pencil was born. Since the 19th century, leads have been made with a mixture of graphite and clay. Graphite is extracted from open pit and underground quarries, such as this one in Germany, and it is very difficult to find and even more difficult to extract. Miners use drilling hammers to make holes for explosives. The pieces of mineral must contain more than 30% graphite for the exploitation to be profitable. At the end of the day's work, the collection is brought to the surface. Once on the surface, the mineral is crushed into small pieces. The rock is crushed and turned into a fine, dry powder. It is now ready to be sent to the pencil factory, which belongs to one of the world's largest pencil manufacturers, the German factory faber Castle, which has been in operation for over 200 years. In the production plant, the raw material used for the lead mixture is graphite, clay, and a little water. The amount of clay added to the lead mixture will determine how hard or soft it will be, while the amount of graphite will determine how dark the pencil will write. Many people wonder how leads are put into pencils, but in reality, they are not put into them. The process of creating a pencil is a bit different than what we usually imagine. Making pencils is an art to make the leads and the core of the pencils. Manufacturers mix compounds such as graphite and clay in a giant blender. Afterward, an adequate amount of water is added, and the machine is turned on to mix all the ingredients. The mixture must be left to rest for an hour and a half. This will produce homogeneous granules. Colored pencil leads are mostly made of color pigments and a binding agent. When the mixture is ready, it is taken to a machine with funnels or molds where the lead is shaped into the form we know today. The graphite and clay mixture is rolled out under very high pressure, almost 10 tons per square centimeter. When it comes out, it looks like the leads we use for writing. However, at this point, the leads are still soft and flexible. To get them to the right point, they must be baked and then placed in a deep fryer with melted wax and oil. First, they are dried at 120 degrees Celsius for three hours in an electric oven to make the leads strong enough for use. They then have to be baked for 45 minutes at around 1000 degrees Celsius. Colored pencils do not go through this treatment as the high temperature would destroy the pigments. The wax coating gives the pencils a silky surface, making them harden and become as resistant as the leads of regular pencils. The more wax there is in the mixture, the harder and darker the lead will be. The wax seals the pores of the lead, creating a surface that glides smoothly on paper. To get a good enclosure, a wood that is soft enough to be shaped, and at the same time very resistant so as not to bend, and the writer's hand should be chosen, such as cedar wood. For the pencil making process, rectangular cedar wood boards measuring 18 by 7 centimeters 
and with a thickness of five millimeters according to the standard measurements of common pencils must be cut. The boards are then passed through a wheel where the grooves that will be the location of the leads are cut. They then go through a machine that fills the grooves with a special and slightly elastic substance called glue, which will protect the lead so that it does not run the risk of breaking in the channel. This keeps the leads firmly adhered to their wooden case. A metal wheel places the leads one by one inside their cases. The second wooden board is placed on top of the first, resulting in what is commonly known as a sandwich. The sandwich is dried in an oven for almost an hour. And a piston presses the boards using a weight of one ton for an hour so that the glue dries completely. At the end of this process, the wooden sandwich boards are so perfectly joined that it is not noticeable that they are two boards glued together with glue. In the next step, the boards are passed through a machine called a milling machine. This is probably one of the most important machines for making pencils because it cuts the wood to the appropriate shape, whether triangular, hexagonal, or cylindrical. Around 10 pencils are cut from each wooden sandwich. A person is in charge of testing their quality by taking one of the pencils and manually sharpening it to check that the lead is effective. They must then press the tip with a weight of 2 kilograms, which it must withstand. The pencils are then given a protective coat. Each pencil receives several layers of paint for a perfect finish. The pencils must be painted four or five times so that the wood is well covered. The last layer of lacquer through which the pencils pass seals the work with a transparent lacquer or varnish. The varnish is water-based and non-toxic because people usually have the habit of using pencils to carry them to their mouths and bite them. After being covered with paint, the pencils go through a stamper that impresses the code and brand of the respective industry at an impressive rate of 500 pencils per minute. Finally, each pencil must be painted separately by dipping it in paint. A sandpaper placed on an endless belt sharpens the pencils much faster than a manual pencil sharpener. To finish the manufacturing process, an eraser is placed on some of the pencils. The pencils are directed to a machine that first adds an aluminum ferrule and then places the eraser by applying pressure. An operator is in charge of checking the pencils by hand. They are then packaged in boxes and distributed worldwide. This is how more than 180 million pencils are made every year. If you want to know how gold ingots are made, you have the link in the description and in the first comment. Remind to give a like, share, and subscribe if you learnt something. Bye-bye.